Wizards of the Coast just announced a brand new secret lair, but they're teasing us by only showing us a couple cards to start with. Owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. As I was saying that, I wondered how many times in my life have I uttered that phrase? Because it has to be the thing that I've said the most in my entire life at this point. Anyways, we are here today to talk about at least portions of a brand new secret layer. And I was just saying last night in the live stream how much I was looking forward to more secret layers showing up at some point during this month because I know that we're supposed to get some kind of super drop this month. Now, what I don't know is whether the secret layer we're gonna talk about today, which is called Black is Magic, I don't know if that secret layer is part of the super drop or it's an individual secret layer because this is one of the secret layers that Wizards of the Coast is uh, basically dedicating towards charity. And those usually have been individual ones. They don't group them in with the super drop. So maybe they're doing things differently this time, but because it's aligned with charity, I'm likely to think that it's just going to be an individual drop and maybe we're getting a super drop on top of that. I don't know. Either way, I expect to see anywhere from five to seven different secret layers this month, which is a pretty beefy amount. But the real question is what sort of stuff is going to be in these particular secret layers. Now, when it comes to the one we've got here today, we've got two of the cards to take a look at. Now, the concept behind this secret layer is essentially it is for Black History Month, all right? So when it comes to the cards, that's how they're going to be tied together. So we get to see two different cards here, and I have to admit, I'm way more excited about the artwork of the second one. So let's start with a card that is perfectly respectable. I'm not knocking the card at all, but when given the two arts we're gonna look at, this is the le the lesser of the two, and that's Shall I, or Shall I, Voice of Plenty. And Shall I is pretty solid, honestly. Showed up originally in Dominaria. One white and three for a three, four flying angel. And it says you, planeswalkers you control, and other creatures you control have hexproof. So it's a pretty formidable protector, right? I mean, Shall I is really sweet in regards of like, hey, you can't target all my stuff, and it's all only for four mana. And then on top of that, she's got a bit of a green tweak to her, where it's two green and four, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control, right? So that is not normal for an angel. I mean, angels beefing up other people and protecting them is normal, but white, green, like permanent boosts like this, aren't normal and to me the boosting ability is really just it's just gravy you know what i mean it's honestly the fact that it gives you your planeswalkers and all your other creatures hexproof like i've faced off against this card a fair number of times and it really leaves you feeling frustrated when you can't destroy the permanence you need to or target your opponent with spells you know it's it's pretty troublesome and the artwork is pretty standard for magic i would say like this is this is an intimidating looking angel. Honestly, I'll say like, when it comes to Shall I, I think of more of like a protector. And this version, see, I mean, obviously the three, four stats work, the beefcakeness is there, but I just get more of like, Shall I feels more like, yo, I'm going to hang back and defend. This angel really gives more of a vibe of, I'm going to take action and make things happen. You know what I mean? So there, there is that, oh, you know what, sorry, I just noticed that there are like, there are actually a whole bunch of people. The way they do these artworks with the text boxes and um, like the whole art going all across the card extended that way, sometimes it's harder to make out the details that are occurring within the bottom portion of the artwork. But it did just occur to me that there are a whole bunch of people arrayed behind Shalai. So I was actually interpreting the artwork more as Shalai kind of moving forwards in an offensive maneuver. But now it actually comes across more as a vibe of there are all these townsfolk who are standing there because it does have a Ravnican kind of vibe. When you look up behind the shoulders and head of Shalai, you can see the spires of the towers and everything, right? It gives a Ravnican feel. And there are a ton of citizens standing there in the road. And basically Shalai is blocking them all. So you've got to go through her 
to get to them. So that, that idea of giving hexproof to your other creatures is actually really well translated in a way that was maybe a little too subtle for me to pick up on because of the text box obscuring. But either way, it actually really does radically change my view of the artwork. It does make her feel more defensive, but still very beefy. That sword is absolutely massive. And I'm not sure exactly what that like black smoke trailing off of the blade is, but it's uh it's some pretty intense artwork. It has more of um it has more of a red white feel to it if I'm being honest. You know what I mean? This feels like a Boros angel, not a Celestian angel, but Whatever. Shalai's not aligned with any of the Ravnican guilds, right? She's from um, Dominaria, so that doesn't really apply. I'm just talking about her overall, overall flavor of the artwork. But yeah, I definitely, my estimation of this has moved up. I looked at these before I started the video, but going back over it, I may pick up additional details like that. So, the more interesting artwork to me is on Ponder. So Ponder is one blue, it's a sorcery. Look at the top three cards of your library, put them back in any order. You may shuffle your library, draw a card, all right? The flavor text says, will the future be brighter? Asked the girl. Riel smiled. I will teach you how to make it so. So this is a cool vibe. You know what, like, I am a sucker for the whole, like, uh, like a mentor wizard and the mentee and the mentos. I'm just a sucker for that kind of concept where you have like an old, wizened sort of individual they, they like really powerful they know a lot they have all this knowledge but in some ways they're a little bit rigid because the more you learn the more rules you apply to yourself right and so you have this idea where you can learn a lot from your elders but at the same time you'll have these young mages that like they'll try things that the older ones would never have tried and sometimes surpass them in surprising ways. I really, really dig that. That's always been like a really awesome thing to me in fantasy tropes. And um, I'm really looking forward to Strixhaven for the same reason, because the idea of like, I'm going to teach you how to be a wizard and the joy of discovering magic and everything. It's something that I wish happened to me when I was a boy. Anyways, <laughs> Ponder has awesome artwork, right? You have this elder teaching the younger one, and it ties back to an older Ponder artwork, which features the different phases of the moon. But having them held in this child's hands while her eyes light up with like that lunar light and all around it, you've got like just some really nice colors. Like out, out behind where they are, it feels like they're in some kind of cave, right? And outside the cave, it's kind of dark and cold, but inside the cave, you have rainbow magic like lighting up the inside and you've got what looks like sparks flying everywhere. It feels really, really mystical. I really dig the vibe of this overall. This is a really cool concept for Ponder. Um, I'm more excited about Shalai as a reprint than I am about Ponder. I feel like Ponder has been printed a lot. You know, I feel like there's a lot of different copies of Ponder, but hey, that's just... That's a nitpick. Sometimes I feel like with these secret layers, there are better choices they could have made in terms of actual playability. But in terms of like the actual concept behind it, the ancient magus teaching the youth, I definitely get down with this. So the other information that we have about this particular secret layer is that it will be available in both foil and non-foil. The contents will be one borderless alternate art shalai, one borderless alternate art ponder, and five additional borderless alternate art cards to be revealed soon. And they follow up by saying, check back on February 9th and 16th, right? So what is today? Today is the 4th. So five days from now, we'll have more details. And then a week after that, I guess we'll have full details. Maybe this is actually going to be part of the super drop, but either way, uh, I'm hoping that February 9th is when we'll get to see all the cards because the new cards are the most exciting part. The other details are, are all useful information, but really, I want to see the pretty new cards. Now, in terms of pricing, you can get, I'm just going to use American pricing here, guys, okay? So you can get it for $50 American, I'm just rounding up, $49.99 American, or the non-foil version is $39.99, and that's for seven alternate bordered Gurgle, gurgle goes the basement. <laughs> All right, anyways, I guess that, you know what? That's the sign that it's time to wrap it up. That's the gong for my show. The hook's gonna come out the side, whatever. We're done here. So I guess 
Roll the names of the patrons. Thank you very much for supporting my channel. These are the the top tier ones. They get to have the name on the screen. Oh, ain't it fancy? Anyways, I'm gonna get out of here. I will leave a link to my new explore video on the screen if you want to check it out. It's about Ranar from Kaldheim, and it's really, really cool. So thanks for coming by. See you later.